Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the legendary Grass Psychic-type Pokémon Celebi, the Time Travel Pokémon. Though they may be so rare as to be considered mythical to some, Celebi are staunch protectors of their forested homes, and will readily use their astounding natural powers to defend their habitats and the Pokémon they share them with. Celebi resemble classical fairies in their form, with an ovoid main body, solid oblong feet with no lower digits, and a pair of long, semi-flat arms with three small fingers each, and, on their back, a pair of clear wings that enable them to fly, assisted by their psychic powers. Their head is almost onion-shaped in its form, with a series of compacted strands of hair-like tissue extending from the back of their head into a curled wisp of some sort, a pair of antennae they use to find the correct space to generate wormholes with, and a pair of large blue eyes with black rims around each eye imprinted on their skin. Their main body is colored a two-toned shade of green, with the curled end of their head and their lower body being a dark shade of green, terminating on their torso in a V-formation that dips down towards their waist, and the rest of their body being a light green color, save for the tips of their antenna, which are tinted the same shade of blue as their eyes. Celebi are rarely ever seen by any form of life as a result of their fairly reclusive nature, but this seems to suit them just fine, as they are regularly observed among beautiful forests while either checking up on their local habitat or, more often, traveling between two different portals between periods of time. Amazingly, these creatures are gifted with the ability to generate wormholes that break through the space-time continuum and allow them to travel through time, though how they are able to do so is still not well understood. From what can be gathered, however, it seems that these creatures are not quite as gifted as a creature like Dialga. By this, it is meant that while Dialga can open portals through time anywhere, in the case of Celebi, they must locate places in the fabric of space-time where there is enough of a disruption in the fabric for them to exploit the weakness and rip open the weak point, allowing them to readily create a wormhole. They can locate these points of weakness using their antenna, channeling their natural psychic powers to locate these disturbances wherever they may lie in a given area. Once these creatures have generated a wormhole, they can then use their psychic powers to stabilize the wormhole for a brief period of time and travel through it, giving them just enough time to get through it before it collapses completely. Because of the sheer amount of psychic power needed to open these portals, these creatures do not gain much in the way of direct psychic offense naturally, given how specialized the function of their powers is, but they can still make good use of attacks like Future Sight to defend themselves with, so they are rarely ever truly defenseless, even if they generally prefer to avoid conflict whenever possible. Aside from their time-traveling abilities, Celebi are further noteworthy for their affiliation with and ability to manipulate the natural world through plants. While they are not believed to be plants as they seem to possess a biological form that functions more like an animal than anything else, these creatures do hold a special connection with the natural world around them, with a large portion of their power being derived from the natural energy that plants radiate. Seeing as they feed off of this energy for sustenance, along with berries, it is the norm to see these creatures within forests, though spotting them is a difficult task to say the least as they prefer to do their work in private. Celebi often prove to be critical to the survival of their natural habitats, though, as not only are they usually the best equipped to handle whatever danger is posed to their natural homes, but, more importantly, they are usually the only life form that is able to restore it in the case of a devastating loss. Although wildfires are a natural occurrence most of the time, and can be good for keeping the overall health of a forested land in a good position and helping new life to thrive, there are still cases where the damage can be so extreme that it may be considered irrecoverable within a reasonable period of time. It is here that Celebi shine the brightest, as they are able to mix their psychic and plant-based natural powers to generate a stream of energy from their bodies that can instantly revitalize plants and inject seeds with enough energy to grow at an incredibly rapid pace, with flowers blooming instantly and trees growing to considerable heights 
even if the land they are rooted on was once merely scorched earth moments before. As a result of this, these creatures are often seen as guardians and the very voice of the forested lands they roam, and are highly respected among locals surrounding said lands, even if they are usually only seen in times of peace. It is even said by some that as long as Celebi exist to protect the natural world, a bright and shining future lies in front of us all. This incredible power is what allows these creatures to possess the natural cure ability as their only ability, and it clearly shows them to be peacekeepers. But it is noted that these creatures have a bit of a calculating and somewhat mischievous side to them, as they have been known to take and transport living creatures and even eggs through time via their wormholes before whisking away to some far-flung corner of their homes. Why exactly they do this is unknown, but it is likely because of two possible reasons. For starters, and is probably the most common reason, it is possible that these creatures are using their time-traveling powers to not only keep watch over their homes literally at all times, but also for experimentation to see how they can better manage and improve the health of their homes, bringing in different life forms from different times into new ones to benefit the forest and even the creature itself in some way, ensuring that everyone gets to live a long and happy life under their care. Secondly, as has been observed on several occasions already, it is quite likely that Celebi transport things as a form of self-defense for both themselves and the creatures they are carrying, either to place an aggressor in a time where they are unable to receive backup or help from others, or to save lives to keep them from being critically injured or worse. Regardless of which possibility it may be, it can be said that Celebi are still quite powerful despite their small size, as almost all of their base stats are above average for fully evolved grass and psychic type Pokemon, the only exception being their base special attack stat as far as being a psychic type. And while they are rarely ever aggressive on their own turf, they can still prove to be quite dangerous and definitely not worth angering if one does not wish to have the full wrath of their forest friends and the forest itself come down upon them. Although Celebi are usually not seen by large crowds or are involved in major world events, there are two incidents involving Celebi that have occurred in recent decades that are worth noting. The first of these events is the Dark Marauder incident that occurred nearly 16 years ago. During this incident, an infamous member of the now defunct Team Rocket, known as the Iron Masked Marauder, attempted to locate and capture a Celebi within one of the forests of the Johto region. Unbeknownst to him, however, the Celebi he was looking for had recently transported a young male trainer from 40 years ago at that time into the present day who was quickly accompanied by a second young male trainer in addition to a few of his friends. While the local community of the area they were in at the time has refused to give out details regarding much of the incident, preferring to keep it a private affair, according to the best sources available, the Iron Masked Marauder was in fact able to capture the Celebi, even though it had befriended the previously mentioned trainers by using a relatively mysterious capture device referred to as the Dark Ball. Apparently, the technology of the Dark Ball maximized a captured Pokémon's power while almost completely removing their free will, placing them completely under the control of the trainer that captured them. The Iron Masked Marauder used the Celebi to nearly destroy the local forest, using a monstrous form created from decaying plant matter, and would have become unstoppable if left undefeated. With the assistance of the two young trainers, as well as a local Suicune, however, the Celebi was able to use its immense willpower to destroy the hold placed on it by the Dark Ball. Sadly, the massive feedback of energy nearly killed the Celebi and placed it in dire straits. It was only with the help of other Celebi, who had traveled through time in response to the grisly incident, that the involved Celebi was revived and rejuvenated. The young boy that had been transported to the present was presumably taken back to his original time, while the Iron Masked Marauder was captured and disposed of by the local community through unknown means. 
and has not been seen to this day. Though the incident itself remained fairly isolated for the most part, the echoes of its events would be felt later on in other regions, as the technology used to create the Dark Balls would later be refined and altered to develop a more direct way of turning Pokémon into pure fighting machines, ultimately leading to the development of the Shadow Pokémon Project and the rise of Cypher in the Ore region. The second notable incident is the Crown City Incident, which is the more recent of the two events having taken place nearly seven years ago. According to reports, a businessman by the name of Grings Kodai abducted a wild Zoroark and its child Zoroa, blackmailing the mother Zoroark into attacking Crown City under the guise of the three legendary beasts, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, that served as the city's guardians. Grings had apparently obtained the ability to see the future 20 years prior to this event by touching a time ripple left behind by a time-traveling Celebi releasing a reverse temporal energy burst in the process that killed all of the plant life in the city. With his powers beginning to fade, however, Grings had become desperate and sought to restore them by any means necessary. Learning that the same Celebi had appeared again and produced another time ripple, Grings used the captured Zoroark to destroy the city, creating little more than an illusion and, with a legitimate reason to have the city evacuated, was finally able to search for the Ripple freely. However, the child Zorua had managed to escape and found itself in the company of several young trainers, and, learning of the poor creature's plight, the trainers decided to help it find its mother and prevent Grings from achieving his goals. It is believed that the young trainers, with the assistance of the Zora, Zorark, and the real guardians of Crown City, were able to drive back Grings from the time Ripple he had discovered once again formed by the same Celebi from decades before, and, with the help of the Zorark's illusionary powers, caused Grings to knock himself out while entranced by an illusion. The Celebi that Grings was pursuing was able to time travel out of the area safely, causing the Time Ripple to disappear, and in the end, Grings' actions 20 years ago were finally exposed to the public, resulting in his immediate arrest. While they might be incredibly difficult to find, and in turn more than live up to their mythical status, Celebi are kind creatures that serve as potent protectors of the forests of the world, and always have the interests of the natural world in the forefront of their mind. If you are lucky enough to find one of these creatures though, don't expect an easy fight, as they can more than use their natural powers to deal considerable damage to anything and anyone foolish enough to try and invade their homeland. As such, you would be better off leaving these creatures be, and either admire them from afar, or only take the chance of getting close to them by showing them just how much you truly do care for the natural world. Just try not to camp out in the lands they live in without taking proper care of any fires you build, because if these creatures see one unattended as a hazard, they will gladly deliver a punishment worse than anything Smokey the Bear could ever give, likely sending you into a time where everything you know and love has yet to be, or, even worse, is already long gone. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching, and I wish you well.